This NBA playoff picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet ten dollars at WinBet and get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. And make sure to download the SGPN app. Your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. This is Brian Bosworth, aka the Boz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Money, 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 money. That's Dog. NBA, Sean. Parlayed with USFL, Sean. No. Parlayed with what no, else is no, there? RIP USFL, Sean. <laughs> Tough. Oh no. Not great uh, weekend for the USFL picks. Finally decided to go full unit with my USFL picks, and of course, it comes back to haunt me. I blame that blob. I'll save it for the USFL right. show because I know the vast majority of our audience and American general do not care about the USFL. But we'll get to that, Ryan. Shh, Colby might be outside. We're here talking about what people. Are all jacked up. The draft is over, which means it's all NBA playoffs all the time. Best place to get down on all your NBA action, of course, is the win betting app. Bet big, win bigger with win bet. Bet ten dollars, get two hundred dollars in free bets. Yes, please. Oh, and of course, wins. Build your own bet feature. That's right. Users can receive a $20 free bet when they win, lose, or push a three plus leg of the build your own bet parlay between Thursday and Saturday. Perfect time. Use that for the NBA playoffs. Download the win betting app or just visit winbet.com to get started today. W Y N N B E T.com. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through winbet is available. You or someone you know has a gambling problem, code one. 800 522 4700. Bet big, win bigger, win bet. Oh, yeah, let's go. So much uh, win betting action. Joining us here, co host of the NBA Gambling Podcast. First off, Moonoff, Manji. Moonoff, what's happening, man? What's going on, gentlemen? It's already uh, round two of the uh, NBA playoffs. Hopefully, we can cash some more uh, winners. Oh, yeah, for our listeners, man, I we've mean, been killing it so far. And and great reminder. Uh, always good to remind the listeners when we give out winners. A uh, bunch of uh, some of our series stuff hit. Of course, my lock Sixers minus one and a half plus one hundred came in. Uh, Ryan and Moonoff were on uh, the Celts minus one forty. Okay, Ryan's. <laughs> Just deal with it. Ryan's dealing with a technical emergency. Unplugged his laptop, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Moonoff, what was your best uh, best hit from Series One? We were all um, in the, we were all in the Mavs at a really good price too. Yeah, I think all, our best one was probably uh, Golden State in four or five. We oh, hit yeah. plus four hundred. Uh, Dallas, yeah, you're right, Sean. We also hit that at plus two thirty. Somebody, <clears throat> somebody told you to bet Dallas when they were down one at plus five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> ow, ow. All right, coming in, Terrell <laughs> Furman. Another uh, I mean, every time I have a winner, Terrell has always won up me. But here we are. <laughs> Terrell loves those big dogs. Yeah, no, that was that was a great play getting down on that, and uh, yeah, pretty pretty profitable first series of games. Uh, Terrell, I'll let you chime in. You and Ryan were just getting in a full lather about the Giants' uh, draft selection, oh. so get well, it out of the I way. Mean, you were also, unfortunately, a Giants fan. But what do you, what's your takeaway from the draft? I think that they had two major issues on the team, and it was on both the offensive and defensive line, and they answered both in the draft. Now it comes to are they going to be able to develop these players into what we know that they can be, especially along that offensive line? But the continuity is just it. So now that they got continuity behind the offensive line, 
it's up to DJ to just show us, like, hey, DJ, what are you made of? Can you be that guy? Can you stay healthy for an entire season? The defense, we have no worries. We know we have an all-world defense, and Kayvon's just going to come in and help that. So you should be very afraid for that defense. But don't let DJ get hot. <laughs> if DJ gets – ooh, you better – everybody better DJ, hope DJ, I like that. Everybody I like better that. hope he DJ a, is he not needs what he a, is. He needs a new nickname. Danny Dimes was not working out. Now it's DJ. I like it. Danny he got demoted. He got demoted. <laughs> it, it, DJ is a slight demotion from Danny Dimes, but he can get back to Danny Dimes. We just got to see it. Moon off. What about your uh, What about your Texans? Went defense both times. Stingley, and then uh, who's it? Who's the other guy that you drafted? They picked up an offensive uh, guard. Oh, that's uh, right. With their thirteenth yeah. pick out of Texas A and M, but. Yeah, I want me and uh, Kramer wired over money to win bet to get over the four and a half on the Texans this year. So we're 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 down on that pretty big this year. That is, yeah. <laughs> if I mean, anyone can find me a Texans to face the Giants in a Super Bowl future type <laughs> of capacity, oh, I, can, I can find you and Ryan. It's right over here on my laptop. <laughs> Matt, I uh, we will not set a limit on that bet for you. Uh, no, but Texans had a pretty great draft. I mean, from what I was reading from the local people and the fans, they're excited. I think uh, Nick Casero did a great job, at least trying to start winning the fan base back. But yeah, I think overall they had a great draft. Now it's just, you know, getting these players out there and, you know, hopefully start winning some games. Yeah. I mean, if Stingley stays healthy, he's uh he could be, yeah. uh, he could mm-hmm. be massive. All right. Enough of the football chat. Let's get to the hoops. We're going to kick things off with our sleeper over under segment. Again, each each of us going to give out a uh, three player sleeper over under. Of course, that pays you a sweet plus six fifty. Again, you probably already have sleeper with your uh, you know for fantasy, but now they have the uh, over under feature. Very easy to get down on those. You can win between two x and twenty x. Click the over under and use promo code SGP. Instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. So deposit one hundred, you get two hundred bucks to play with. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details and join our squad so you can copy our picks. Our picks do need to get a little bit better. I mean, we have, we really need to improve as a squad. SG.pn slash squad. Squad is a lowercase there. They uh, say a high tide rises all ships. Well, I and believe, honestly, or something like that. If you uh, if you got a sweet three team uh, three teamer or four or five, I, I'm I'm open to suggestions. Hop in our squad, tag me, tag Kramer. Let us know what you're getting down on. I'm I'm down to ride with do we, the listener. Do we have a minute to explain EV to the listener? Because if you don't sign up for sleeper, you're just a negative EV guy. Yeah. You're not going to find plus, money on the table. plus six fifty on a three teamer. You're losing money, not playing, Sean. I can't wait till someone comes after me on Twitter. Look at this guy. He's try. <laughs> Fuck you. Let's pick some winners. All right, let's do it. Uh, Terrell, you have the honors. Kick things off. What do you got for your three player sleeper plus six fifty? And of course, we are going all in. How, right? how do they not have Harbaugh as a spokesman yet? Sleeper. He's a big sleepover <laughs> guy. Terrell, what do you got? <laughs> Didn't like my right. sleeper joke. <laughs> I just, I, I just don't know if anyone got the reference. I got it, but Harbaugh once slept over with a punning no, recruit. I, know. Okay. I got it. Yeah, Terrell, what no. do you got here? Okay, after that <laughs> debacle. Oh, Terrell didn't like my you. joke at all. Jesus. No, no, no. It was. I got you. So you got Jimmy Butler. Uh, over one and a half steals. That's my mm. first leg. He has a steal in 13 straight games versus the Sixers. So wow. you're telling me I'm guaranteed one. He's and got I just a chip have to hope for one more. Yeah, I like it. We're taking Mikel Bridges over half a block. He's going to get the oh. Luka primary assignment. It's going to be tough for him because I think Luka still goes off today, but that's a fun prop. He, had, he didn't get one his last game against the Suns, but he's got three straight before that. So I think Mikel Bridges, half a block. That should be good. Let's go for the over there. And then let's just fade Tobias Harris in a spot where everybody should be trying to score. Everybody should be trying to help with Joel Embiid out. Tobias Harris is just going to flop like he's done all season. So Tobias Harris under 17 and a half points. All right, you know the 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 one that to me is the most fun there is the Mikael Bridges just one block like because 
you know, some yeah. of these. It's it, like the the fir, like the full will the fullback have uh, one and a half rushing yeah, yards in the Super Bowl because the, <laughs> the entire game you're still hoping for. Like even even if he hasn't gotten it, like with 10, 15, you know, with like the last possession, you're still rooting for that block. So I yep. I love the uh, I love the rooting interest on that one. All right, Moonoff, kicking it over to you. What do you got for your uh, three player sleeper? Uh, all right. So my first one, I'm going with one of your guys um, on the Sixers there, Sean George's Niang. I'm going to go Ooh. over his, let's see, what was it? Six and a half points here for tonight. Um, he's averaging 12 per game against the Miami Heat and without uh, Joel Embiid in the lineup, um, his numbers are, are far better. And again, I think they've played uh, four times, this, oh, sorry, three times a season. He's at 12, nine and 15 against the Miami Heat. So six and a half. Here seems like a little bit of gift. Um, and I'm gonna go over to the Phoenix and the Dallas game. I'm gonna take uh, DeAndre Ayton's over 11 and a half rebounds. We talked about the NBA pod this morning. Four matchups this season. He's had 13 or more in every single one of those games. Three of those four games, he had 17 rebounds, and we saw Rudy Gobert dominate at least in those first couple games against the Dallas uh, front court. So I'm gonna take DeAndre Ayton over 11 and a half rebounds, and then I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna switch out. I'm gonna go with Chris Paul's uh, steals over one and a half. He's had at least two uh, in the three of the matchups so far during the regular season, and I feel like there's gonna be some turnovers by Dallas Mavericks at least in Game One. I think that Chris Paul is gonna be able to take advantage of that. Um, and you know, we always know he has active hands and he's able to deflect, you know, or get steals when guys are driving in and get his steals that way. So I'm gonna go with uh, Chris Paul over one and a half steals. Yeah, a motivated Chris Paul, which he seems. I mean, you know, his game six was pretty awesome. What he he didn't miss a shot, right? He was yeah, he was like four, yeah, fourteen on fourteen. Insane. Yep. Guys still got it. Uh, knock on wood for him that he stays healthy. All right, kicking over to me, uh, James Harden over nine and a half assists. He's actually had a ton of assists in the road game. Um, I know, you know, with Embiid out. You're worried, like, hey, he's going to be more of a score. But honestly, when his scoring goes up, it doesn't seem to uh, seem to hurt his assist total. And actually, Embiid was good for a decent number of assists as well normally. So I think he's going to have a lot of opportunities to kick it over to guys like Maxi, even Tobias Harris. So I also like Tyrese Maxi over 22 and a half points. This is a big spot for him, and he's had a really good playoff, uh, great series. In Toronto overall, and I think twenty two and a half with you know, hey, Embiid needs us. The fact that they're saying, hey, he might be able to play game three, game four. Once the series returns in Philly, the Sixers just need to steal one. I think they're going to be motivated. So, Ass- assuming you have to choose, do you, can you choose three players from the same team? Are we about no. to hear it all? Oh, okay, they don't let you. You have to go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I did not choose a third uh, sixer, Ryan. I, well, th- those were overs, right? I didn't want to. Yes. I'm, okay, I'm just writing it down here. I want to. I might want to squat up with you here. Luka Doncic uh, <laughs> under three and a half three points made. So Ouch. played the Suns once and uh, only went two for nine from behind the arc. And I I think the Suns perimeter defense not horrible. So I'm going I'm going under there on the three and a half threes. Kramer, what nice, do you got? Nice work. Uh, I I was very happy to hear. Tur- Terrell was shaking his head. Terrell, you're not feeling the Luca under on the threes, right? Man, look, Mikael Bridges is a defensive player to your candidate, but I think l- playoff Luca is going in full form tonight. <laughs> yeah, that is that is what the NBA, like all the higher ups and the basketball people in the NBA, they want to see Luca do well, oh, yeah. and I think this is it. It's the it's the stage for the stars sh- to shine. The NBA playoffs. Uh, look, I, I was happy to hear Moonoff talk about his, uh, the Chris Paul active hand situation. One day after his career, we'll find out about his strip club lore because active <laughs> hands off the court and on the court. Get you banned look, from strip clubs. Let, let's talk. Maybe that's why Harden uh, is always in strip clubs. Doesn't have active hands. Doesn't have active hands. Knows, He's knows how to sit there well, and not get in Miami, trouble. Miami, my. And by experience, Miami has some pretty good strip clubs. Yeah, so but, he but, might. <laughs> but isn't that the and and coming back to uh, that uh, story that went viral? Doesn't he do well around uh, cities with really good strip clubs? I yeah, thought that was the and, correlation. There. And back to the active hand, maybe he's more welcome because he isn't trying to play any defense. He isn't yes. trying to get a hand in there, yeah. right? No, late he's not in the trying lane. to steal. <laughs> he's not. Try- <laughs> oh, all right. My my three teamer, three player over <laughs> under squad. 
uh, whatever we want to call it. DeAndre ain't under on the points, 18 and a half. But lame uh, TMZ take here, but just go look at his game log. It feels like a good bet. Jason Tatum, bounce back spot, over 28 and a half points. And that's not bad. And uh, Clay Thompson, listen to this, Sean. Clay Thompson has played three road games in the NBA playoffs this year so far. He has attempted 34 three pointers in those three games. He went under yesterday going three or uh, on Sunday. Go, yes. Yesterday going three for 10. I'm going over on clay temps Thompson, three and a half, three pointers made. He's just putting up too much volume to take the under. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't seem like he's oh, quite a hundred percent, but it seems like he's getting he closer. Still took th- 10 threes yesterday. I, I, yeah. I'll bet on him going 40%. No, that feels like a fair bet. All right. That'll do it for our sleeper squads. Again, hit the over under promo code SGP. Get that instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. And if you don't believe me, Google Jim Harbaugh sleepover punter. Oh no, I I think we got it. Kramer, kick the- <laughs> sometimes you got to keep hammering. Make them laugh. All right, you want to start with the Sixers NBA? Sean taking on the Heat. 430 tip later on today, Monday, May 2nd. We got the Heat laying eight, minus 340 on the money line, Sixers plus 270. 209 is the total. Almost feels like the 90s with that kind of total, huh? Yeah, 209. What are we doing here? We've been playing basketball. Uh, Sean, I assume you're going to be on the Sixers catching the points and all the disrespect here, but I'll throw it over to Moonoff to hear what a nice, logical, objective mind thinks about game <laughs> one here in this series. <laughs> Yeah, I think that this is a spot for the Miami Heat just come out in game one and and make a statement on their home floor. And I I think that I know I'm kind of going against what I said this morning as far as points being scored on the NBA gambling pod. But we kind of take a look at what the Sixers have given up without uh, Joel Embiid on the floor, on the at least on the defensive side. I believe it was close to 110 points per game. Um, Obviously, we know he's not going to be in at least in game one, in game two, but in round one, we saw defensively what the Miami Heat did to Trey Young. Like they smothered him. They were able to throw diff- different guys at him on, on the same possession. I think that's something that James Harden is going to struggle with. And I think that this is a good spot for the Miami Heat on, in game one to come out and take care of business on their home floor. I'm taking the Miami Heat here, uh, minus the eight. And I, I know I said on the gambling podcast this morning, I, I'm leaning towards the under, but I think I changed my mind to go with the over in this game as well. And, and just real quick before Terrell gives us his take, I, I, I we we probably should bring it up because, uh, you know, in the past Philly sports teams have not played their starters all the way to the end of the game. It was really nice to see Doc Rivers say that he was playing Joel Embiid <laughs> because the, the the guys on the other side of the the other the other team he respected them and they were still going for it out there. So shout out to Doc Rivers uh, acting like a man, unlike a, a, a other. Well, Nate, Nate unnamed, Sudfeld, Nate Sudfeld is on a roster, which oh, I don't wow. know if we'll we're be able still, to say that still, about. Daniel Jones after still, this year. Still dying on that <laughs> island. Got a good look at Nate Sudfeld. Uh Terrell, <laughs> what do you got on this on the Sixers heat? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna a hundred percent say there's no possible way the Sixers are in this game. <laughs> but if Tyrese Maxey is not on, then there's no way that this the Sixers <laughs> are in this game. It has to be on Tyrese Maxey because you're playing with a 60, maybe 70, 70 is feels generous percent James Harden, and he's fully immersed himself into that facilitator role with playing next to Joel Embiid. He hasn't had to go out there and be that James Harden in a while. So while I'm not saying that he can't do it, but it's going to take a little bit more out of him, and we don't know what the strength of – whatever nagging injury that he's still de- dealing with. We don't know what that is. So Tyrese Maxey has to go out there and say, I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be the person to shoulder that scoring workload. And while the Heat are very, very good against the point guard position, he's going to have to try to see it through. I don't think they do. So I'm going to take the heat on the spread here in this first game. I think this is, uh, I was talking about it earlier that, you know, we talk about the North remembers and Game of Thrones, and all this. The South remembers when they went up to Philly and they took a L when Joel Embiid and James Harden weren't playing. They remember that. So I don't think that they're going to be taking this team lightly. And I think or they're, you, or they're a good, you know, the Sixers are a good matchup. Moon off. So what were you, were you on Heat minus eight? Yeah. Uh, in particular, I did like the first quarter for the Miami heat at minus two and a half. If we're going to get some derivative derivative bets in there, but 
yeah, I'm leaning towards taking Miami minus eight in this game. Yeah, I'm all over oh, Sixers plus eight. Course. Let's go. I, I all, think all they, the marbles on James Harden. Fat and out of shape. Tough to overcome quickly. Well, Ryan, you talk about out of shape. Uh, Jimmy Butler with a random hamstring injury didn't play that last, or was it hamstring or was it knee? Either way, he was out on that last game against Atlanta. And we've seen teams, a la the Boston Celtics, who had a lot of momentum. Then they take a long time off. That first game, little bit of rust. Where uh, you know, uh, in what sort Atlanta of competition are you taking James Harden over? Jimmy Butler, Michael Jordan's kid. <laughs> no, I, what I'm saying is uh, Jimmy Butler hasn't played since April 24th. I think it's not crazy. Rested. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Jimmy Butler's doing off the court. I don't know if he's actually getting in some rest. But this team is coming in cold. The Sixers just played a elimination game. They got rid of the uh, got rid of the Raptors, uh, avoiding a game seven. I think they're going to come in dialed in. I think they get up. The fact that. Here, here's the the psychology of it. The fact that they put out the report that Embiid is not done for the season, that they expect him to be back for Game Three at home in Philadelphia. They said, "Hey guys, there's hope. All you got to do is get that one, get that one game. You basically, if you win Game One, you can take Game Two. You can be at the strip club in the first half. We don't care about Game <laughs> Two. Game One is the one we need beep, to steal." Beep. And sorry, that's the sound of me taking advantage of this silly play by the Sixers. The obvi- the obviously, they're being mismanaged. Doc Rivers is not not a great guy to be leading this ship, and it's all bullshit. We won't see Joel Embiid back in this series. We're wow. getting a discount on this series price at minus three sixty. We're getting a discount on this price at Heat this minus really one and a half, a minus one forty. <laughs> it's a bad take. Yeah. You're putting all your marbles on Harden until the ship is back. No, he needs one game. Ty- James Harden and Tyrese Maxey need one game. This is like you telling every NFL team they're wrong about Malik Willis when you're grading teams. No, only only specific teams. The Detroit Lions and the New York Giants will regret not drafting Malik Willis. Uh, That is my (laughs) take. And now the you know I'm not going to give the Bills a gra- a bad grade. They have Josh Allen. I'm not going to give the Texans a bad grade. They got uh you know that one guy that kind of looked okay. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> so all right, Ryan, you're in on you're in on Miami minus three sixty for the series. I would say this: if you're betting this, if you're betting the Sixers, you might want to wait a couple games because they're going to be o two. Uh, by but, the time this comes back to Philly, and then maybe you get then then you know every nothing's changed, right? The series hasn't started because no one's won a road game, and you can get a much better much better value on this. Why would you bet plus two eighty with with no certainty Embiid's going to play? If he doesn't come back, they don't have a chance to win this series. So why yeah. not wait and get a better price? Well, because then it does the price change if they go O two? It always does. It always does. But right, if it goes O two, and then they announce Embiid is playing Game Three, you still think it's better than plus two eighty? Yes. Okay. Well, either way, I'm on the Sixers. <laughs> you can't play that right now, but I would take plus two eighty. Terrell Moonoff as saying uh, good rational basketball handicappers. What do you guys like on the series? You can take, of course, Heat minus one and a half at minus one forty. Heat just to win. I love that too. Sixer, or I mean, you know, Heat in four, five, six, seven. What do you, what do you guys like for the series? So I'm. Um- I'm not touching minus 300 with anybody, yeah. especially the Miami Heat, who kind of let me down as favorites for the most part. But yeah, they're I better like the, as dogs. Yeah, I like them. I like the one and a half, though. I think the one and a half is a solid price, and it kind of opens up the door to them winning in six games where they probably steal one in Philly. Even with they'll be back, they can probably steal one. You would like to see them win both of these games in Miami here, but even if they lose one in Miami, there's still a realm possibility that opens them up for the one and a half. So I think that one and a half and minus 140 is a better bet, but I'm not touching that money line for the Heat. It's just Heat to win, shoes. Heat win uh, series 4 2 is plus 450 for those who, yeah. Uh, yeah. for those who might want to take a piece of that. It's not bad. Munaf, what do you got uh, series wise? What are you looking at? Yeah, that minus one and a half just makes too much sense. Uh, I like that as well. But uh, like Kramer just said, he didn't six or he didn't five. I, I like those numbers plus two sixty and plus four fifty. I think I think this is going to be too much for this Philly squad. And again, we're going to hear about the excuse of the injuries for the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. But the thing with the Miami is that they also have injuries, but the depth on this team for the Miami is what's going to make the difference, right? And, just doesn't have the depth that the Miami Heat has. So even without 
Kyle Lowry, um, they still have Tyler Hero. They still have shooters around this uh, team and have a deep squad. So I'll I'll go Miami Heat in. I'll go in six. Yeah, I I, uh, I I'll be with you guys. I'll be super boring and take the same. It does seem like that that Heat. Heat in five, heat in six spread is nice. Uh, I don't think it's quite as nice as when we were playing the Warriors last round, getting four to one on both, um, because yeah. the heat in five is only two sixty. But if I had to lean one, I'll take that six as well. I like that. That's uh-huh. fun. Or do we go sweep, Sean? Four hundred. Maybe nope. we go s- <laughs> Sixers and six, Sixers and seven, plus seven fifty, plus eight hundred. That is a nice. Uh, that's a nice payday. All right, I'm just <laughs> I'm just entering in all these awesome winners. I, I uh, good luck, Sean. I don't I don't I feel like NBA Sean needs one more round this year. You're so into it, Ryan. You you're just jealous. You don't have a basketball. I'm, team. I'm wishing you well. You're just I didn't say worst of luck. I didn't say worst of luck. You piece of shit from Philly. I complimented <laughs> Doc Rivers for being a man who plays his starters to the end. I'm saying best of luck. I like NBA Sean. He's very optimistic. You know what I'm optimistic about, Ryan? I'll tell you this. I just saw Terrell yawn. I saw Terrell oh. yawn. Terrell, you need oh, some. Got you, me. You need some trade coffee. That's right. Trade coffee. Delicious, nice uh, level of caffeine. You can even kind of pick out what kind of beans you want. Uh, how whether you like the light roast with more caffeine, the dark roast with less caffeine. Whatever your coffee preference is, Trade Coffee has you covered. Some of the best roasters in the country, handcrafted, uh, small batches. Really love this stuff. Send it right to your door. Easy to sign up. And really, what's really fun is taking that coffee quiz because they dial it in to your specific coffee taste. Over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash SGP. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash SGP. GP and let trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off. And don't forget Mother's Day coming up. I know uh, some of you may have slacked on getting your mom uh, something special, but again, um, me and my mom both enjoy awesome coffee. Highly recommend a trade subscription. Perfect gift for the coffee loving moms in your life. Drinktrade.com slash SGP. Kramer. Number two. AKA uh, the second game of the doubleheader tonight, Monday, May 2nd, 7 p.m. on the West Coast. Dallas takes on the Phoenix Sun and those active hands of Chris Paul. Minus six, minus 240 on the money line. Dallas plus 195. 214 and a half is the total. <coughs> Not a total guy, Sean, but I might want to squeak that over there. Really? Uh, yeah, it feels, feels like a, a, a touch low. I don't know. Like I said, not a totals guy. Uh, Terrell. After we made so much money on this Dallas Mavericks team, yep. correctly telling people to wait and then, then hodl and cash yep. the fuck in. Uh, no chance against Phoenix, though, right? Oh no, they. I think they have a chance. Oh. I think they have a chance. So Phoenix has shown us over the course of that last season. Yes, Devin Booker missed some time, but there's still some holes in this team that they could plug. And while they are the best team in the NBA, they're not a perfect team. And so I think that that opens up the door of opportunity for Dallas. I think playoff Luca is here and he's here to stay. He's shown us in three series that he can hoop in the playoffs and he is about to smoke at any given time. So I, I'm, I'm fully behind playoff Luca, at least for this first game. I think that he's going to catch him off guard. Mikel Bridges is going to do his, his hardest to guard him today. And I think he's going to put up a good effort, but Luca's just going to push through and that's going to be enough to push the Mavs. I like the Mavs plus points. Ooh. Oh, moving off. Making a making a good case there. Yeah, I'm going the other way. I, I like Phoenix here tonight. Uh minus five and a half. Look, they've played uh five first, uh sorry, five game ones with CP3 as a member of the Phoenix Suns. They've won all five of those games on their home floor by an average of 11, three, uh, 11 points. And I think this is a game where Phoenix will come out and take care of business. And that's when you see Jason Kidd make some adjustments in game two. And that's where maybe the Dallas Mavericks get a victory um, to get one, at least in Phoenix. But as far as tonight, I think that uh, Phoenix comes out and gets the job done. I expect DeAndre Aiden. We talked about this uh, on the pod this morning. He should have a big series and also a big uh-huh. game here tonight. You have Devin Booker back as well. Um, and I just feel like uh, this doubt, this, sorry, this Phoenix team will come out and uh, take care of business here tonight. So I'm going to lay the points here, at least in game one. 
Yeah, Booker stretching those legs. Maybe he has his first big game. I, I like it too. I just think th- this team understands the importance of getting shit done. So Chris Paul, another game one victory. Lay the points. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Darrell's making a bunch of good points for the the Mavs to get the cover. I am. I I don't know. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll with Terrell here. Dallas plus six. I know I went under Luca threes, but I think he could get it done. Um, you know, not necessarily from behind the arc. And and I think I, I'm actually kind of going against you, Ryan, on the total. I if I had to pick a total, gun to my head, I would I would actually go under here, two fourteen yep. and a half. Feels like we could see a little bit more of a defensive game, a little chippiness. This is the second round of the uh, NBA playoffs. And yeah, Booker is interesting. You worry, like, was he playing possum a little bit? Was that kind of just a warm up game? And then he totally activates in this series or in this game. I'm concerned about that, but I'll take uh, Mavs plus six here, first round. Or Certainly first game. wouldn't be surprising if he if he's a little bit healthier than he was in that first game back. So, yeah, I mean, if he, it, he could he be the difference maker in this series? Absolutely. Bucks, Celtics. Let's well, let's, move. let's talk the series. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. So wonder, sorry. Can we get? Is there like a line for ejections or technical fouls or something? Because when you think about who's in between Luca and Chris Paul, who are both hotheads, oh then yeah, you add Jay Crowder and Dorian and Dorian Finney Smith as well, who are all hotheads. I just feel <laughs> like even ejections. Throwing, yeah, even throwing uh, Mark Cuban there, like you're. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be some ejections in this series. I just feel it. I, well, I don't and, know. And, and and two, you saw how. You know the Pelicans, uh, as much as they were kind of in that series for a long time, then when they really started pressing Chris Paul and getting in his grill defensively, that uh-huh. you saw that that kind of rattled him. Now, yeah, he closed it out super strong and looked very good. Uh, but I think I wouldn't be surprised if you see some random like press defense, something to kind of get under Chris Paul's skin because he's the ultimate agitator. But he also gets agitated pretty easily. Uh, he's got that uh, duality. Going so, Mavs wow. Suns run. Ality, uh, all right. So we got Mavs plus two thirty, Suns minus two ninety for the series. Mavs plus one and a half is plus one ten. Suns minus one and a half games is minus one thirty five. I mean, you know, again, this is this is one of those series like the standard NBA series, right? Minus one and a half, not really juiced up either way. And, and again, it it just doesn't. You know, I feel like when you're doing futures analysis, you're just saying, is this like, does this have the capability to go seven games? And if it doesn't, then I'm going to look to the minus one and one and a half with the Suns. All right. So you're on Suns minus one and a half for the series? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 every look- time I see Jason Kidd on the sideline. Yeah, I think he's no. not. He's not as horrible. <laughs> every t- I know, but I don't he's care. A good coach. I'm I judging coach, the book man. by its cover. I know. And I I'm know he's 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 looked like an idiot many times, but I, I'm going I'm going Dallas plus two thirty. I'm going dog again. I don't think there's I don't think there's much value in Mavs plus one and a half. I'm gonna isolate at you plus one ten. Yes, yeah. please do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Dallas hater, but uh, yeah, give me the Mavs plus two thirty. I think you know, Sean just realized he was back. It's not Dallas. bad bet. Yeah, no, thank he, you, thank you, Terrell. It's Terrell, what do you what do you Luka. got on the series? I hate to put everything on Luca in this series, but it starts and ends with him. If he plays well, that they are in the game. If he plays yeah. well, they're in the game. That's straight up. And so now you add Jalen Brunson, who's somebody who they had, but he didn't have the season like he's having last year, this year. And every single time Jalen Brunson scores over 20 points, that checkbook just opens more and more and more. And he's just like, look, I'm going to keep going. And so you yes, add in the Spencer Dinwiddie as well, another shot creator. Hey man, I think I think Dallas is in this series, and I think it's a lot more fun. It two plus two anything is probably a little bit too much for me, but I definitely like the plus one and a half because I think this goes seven regardless. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. all right. I Game like it. to go, a series to go seven is uh, two to one. Just any series? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, this series to go oh, seven okay. is two to one. The series we're speaking about right now, I I would uh, I would almost look to play Suns five, Suns six, three to one, four to one. That feels that feels nice to me. It's almost better than minus one thirty five, and then you just have to avoid the sweep. Yeah, which feels like, uh, I mean, obviously, I think Dallas shocked. gets a game. Yeah, I mean, that that would be a silly. Uh, Moon off. What do you got? Uh, what do you got on the series? Yeah, give me Suns minus one and a half. Uh, I 
I will be shocked if I see Dallas get two games in this series. Uh, going back to the season series, Phoenix won all three games. Um, I just think that there's just, just this Phoenix team is complete. And if we take a look, they played Utah. I mean, we shit on Utah all season long on the NBA gambling <laughs> podcast. And, you know, I know Dallas made it look easy, but I'm just not a, I'm not a believer in this Dallas team. I, I think that if they knock down their three point shots, yeah, they're going to be in it. But when it gets down to clutch time, we know this Phoenix team with Devin Booker, with Chris Paul, uh, it's just going to be too much for this, um, for this Dallas team. So give me the minus one and a half on Phoenix. And then I also probably take, I agree with Kramer there five or six max uh, for the, uh, for Phoenix to win this series. Okay. So yeah, you get Phoenix five games is plus 300 Phoenix in uh, six games is plus 400. So you get a little, a little, a uh, little, both of that a little, a little, both sides of that action. Yeah. I like it. Kramer. What? All right. Uh, Milwaukee <laughs> bucks playing the Celtics. No, I, we're, we're, we're done talking about the, the Suns yeah, Mavericks. I, was, I gave you my pick. Oh, yeah. Was, right. Okay. I, I thought you were going to read the next line. Uh, fair you enough. Know. Wednesday 4 PM. Well, why are you getting angry, Sean? I'm not. <laughs> Bucks, Celtics, Celtics minus four, minus 185, plus 150, 214 and a half is the total. Go first, Sean. Oh man, uh, this game, I think you got to give it to the Celtics. As much as I really am just wanting them to lose at all costs, uh, they are a very good uh, team overall, very good defensively. Jason Tatum has a bounce back game. And I think the the Bucks were fortunate to steal that first one. This should this definitely has, you know, se- seven game series written all over, but balance, you know, coming off a loss at home with that defense lane four is maybe a hair high, but yeah, I think you got to go Celtics minus four moon off. Yeah, I agree with Sean. I think this is a spot with Boston. Like they have to come out and win this game. You do not want to go down. Oh, two heading back to Milwaukee um, and then having to win four out of the next what five games to win this series. Um, so Boston, uh, they shot poorly. I mean, very poorly in game one yesterday against the Milwaukee bucks. They're going to get their three point looks. It's about a being efficient from the floor and making those shots. You know, Jason Tatum and Al Horford were the two good three point shooters for them, uh, at least yesterday, but guys like Marcus smart, Jalen Brown, they're all going to have to step up um, in this game and look, they held the bucks to 101 points just offensively. They weren't very good. So I'm expecting them to shoot better. I expect uh, Ime Udoka to make the adjustments that they need to in game two. Um, I like Bucks. Sorry, uh, the Boston Celtics minus the four as well in game two. No, yeah, this is the ultimate situational spot. Was it yeah. just a letdown spot in game one? I don't know. I mean, it was I like 100 was. Yeah, it gave out the yeah, Tatum and over. And they also for the had points. a bad shooting night too. Yeah, I mean, it's just a it's a regression game on all fronts, and I, I think you know from a futures perspective, but not to jump ahead, I think you absolutely have to have to take a, you know, a small piece of however you want to play the Celtics because it does like they just fell on their face. This is a, like, I would say this is the series. I would still bet on going seven more than any other series in the postseason. Yeah, And so I would maybe t- try to take advantage of that. Cause the, the futures price have changed a little bit. Terrell, who do you like in game one? Uh, I'm still taking the bucks here. So Ooh. I like the Bucks. I like the Bucks in the game one. I locked it up. I thought that they were going to get the win. And while I do think that there is still the run possibility for the Celtics to get the win here, I think that it can absolutely come underneath the spread and the Bucks can still cover this. The Bucks are really good on the road. That's ultimately what it is. They're extremely good on the road. They're one of the best teams in the seat in the league on the road, especially when they're as road dogs. And so I'm not going to fade that. I'm definitely not going to fade that against Dog. the Celtics team who lets people down when you least expect it. This is the game. Everybody <laughs> yeah. thinks, oh, the Celtics is about to come back, have a bounce back game, win this game. No, they let you down when you least expect it. I could 100% see the Celtics going down 0-2. And then when nobody is betting on them, everybody's thinking sweet. They come in there and have a really good showing on the road. So yes, nah. give me the bucks here, plus four. Terrell, Terrell is really getting me. Ah. He makes good points. You know what, Terrell, you won me over. Let's go bucks. <laughs> go bucks plus four. Cause that, that man, that minus four is maybe just a hair high. And to your point, like it should really be down to two after yeah. losing game one, it should really be down to two, two and a half. Yeah. And there's just so much pressure on this Celtics team. 
And Milwaukee now, you know, they're a championship team and they have nothing to lose in game two. The the more the more you talked it out, the more I'm like, yeah, four points and then as a road already, dog. Or they've already done what they needed to do. Yeah. God, that's the problem God damn with these, these NBA yeah. teams. And, yeah. and this is like you could see Boston win by twenty here because Milwaukee's like, all right, all business right. trip. We we let's go out. Let's go have a we stole home court. We stole all right. home court. I'm back on they, Boston. They had a whole bunch I of I let my I let my anti Celtics <laughs> bias. I just want to hear the Celtics lose just to hear Bill Simmons podcast. So I think I think that's tainting my handicap here as I go back and forth. Final final <laughs> switch back to Boston minus four. Kramer brought up some good stuff about the uh, zigzag theory. And, and and to like I think the futures prices are a little little mangled at this point, but it does it does seem like there might be some value in in looking uh, like I said at that is the series going six? Is the series going seven? Uh, you have to play Bucks minus one and a half plus one twenty five or Celtics plus one and a half minus one fifty five. Mm. That that feels silly. I I do think taking Celtics plus one and a half at any price, as soon as they level it out, it's going to flip back over, and it, it it you'll probably feel pretty good with that in your pocket. But mm. I don't know if you can lay minus one fifty five with it. Yeah, so it opened uh, Celtics minus two hundred, Bucks plus one seventy coming the other way, and now it's Bucks minus one thirty five, Celtics plus one ten. Oh man, yeah, I, I, it does feel like the, I mean, look at the series games. The the six and seven is at one sixty five, one sixty. I mean, price wise, to your point, Ryan. Yeah, how does the Celtics not cover plus one and a half? But you're getting at crazy minus odds. I guess, gun to my head, I'll I'll go Milwaukee minus one and a half, just because them winning four two. Is more likely in my mind than either Celtics winning the whole thing or Celtics getting into seven, especially when you factor in the plus odds. But it's pretty close. What about you, Terrell? What do you got? I think I'm just going to take it to go to seven. I think this is a seven series. Uh, I don't think the Boston Celtics are going to go lying down. While they will let people down in some very unfortunate spots, they're also that annoying team that can pick it up in random spots as well. So. They've been one of the best teams after the All Star break in all of NBA, and I don't think that that stops now. I think that it, they got a couple hiccups with this Milwaukee team. They're a very good defensive team, but they'll eventually be able to figure it out and at least push this to seven. So yeah, the, the series price in seven is plus one sixty. You know what? I'm gonna toss in Milwaukee wins in seven at plus six fifty. I know that would involve, or sorry, plus six fifty. I know that would involve them closing it out in Boston, but man, if we both you know, I, I yep. feel like consensus them getting this series to seven isn't crazy. Wouldn't you want one team at plus six fifty? That feels like a nice price. Well, to and, me. I, and I, yeah, I think the way you would play that because if you just play both teams to win in seven, you, your Celtics, but you know that you chop it in half, right? You put e- even even in action on both. You're now getting plus three twenty five if the Bucks win and plus one ninety five if the Celtics win. Um, I'm sorry. Plus 150. Uh, wait, I'm I'm doing plus 145 if the Celtics win. So yep. I, I think you know you're losing a little bit if the Celtics win, Sean, but you're still getting a big payday if the Bucks win, and you're not and you're not getting screwed if the Bucks can't handle uh, Game Seven there. So maybe that's it's probably better to play that than just Game Seven. I, that would be my take because you get a little bit of that high. Ceiling. So what's your what's your what are you getting down on the series? I'm gonna Aaron? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna play both teams to win in seven. Yeah. So you got Milwaukee plus six fifty, and Celtics plus two ninety, which I think would work out better than the plus. Is Celtics one. really plus two ninety and seven. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do you want to change that? Because yeah. I think that's what? a better price for you, that is, uh, Terrell. That, but no, but. I I just don't. Why is there such a big difference in the two teams? From is that the home court? Yeah, plus yeah. I need to. Yeah, plus that's what I'm that's, saying. that's why it sounds crazy. That's ridiculous. To me. I think just I'm playing. not fate in Giannis Antetokounmpo in a game seven. I'm sorry. No, he's 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 possibly you the get, best player in the NBA. You get Giannis at plus six fifty in a game seven. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, isn't on. that the way you handicap NBA? Whoever has the best player <laughs> yeah. wins the game. Whoever sells the most posters, <laughs> uh, the league gets it going for them. Moon off. What about you? What's the series uh, price? Yeah, I think Boston is going to find a way. I kind of agree with you guys that this series will at, will go at least six. Won't be surprised if it does go to seven. Um, again, I, I think that Boston they were one of the better teams, if not the best team, in the second half of the season after the All Star break. 
Um, and again, it's going to come down to three point shooting. We talked about this in the last years against Chicago. They just don't have the, they didn't have the shooters to kind of keep up with, uh, with the Milwaukee bucks. I think Boston does have that. It's going to be on guys like Marcus smart and Jalen Brown to make those shots. They're going to get the looks. We saw that in game one, but they just weren't able to knock them down. Um, I'll go Boston in give me Boston in seven as well, man. I, I, I have found a hard time seeing that they win in Milwaukee in, in, in game six. I think this gets to seven and I think they come out and take care of business on their home floor in game seven, um, against Milwaukee. So I'll take that. Nice. I, and I, just a message to all the books out there. What happened to the over unders on series? Games? Yeah. Cowards. Yeah, yeah. It's like they all <laughs> yeah, agreed. I haven't we're, seen it. We're not going to offer these anymore because we get crushed. This would be a classic case of just take whatever the price take is on over. over. Yeah. Just take the over. Shout out to Aaron in the YouTube chat saying Bucks are not winning the series. Celtics are a whole vibe right now. He also <laughs> followed it up with you guys are not very receptive to the comment section. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Aaron. Got your shout out. Got your Celtics are a whole vibe right now. Good luck with that. Yeah, this I mean again, the 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 more I just stared at these numbers, Milwaukee getting it winning in 7 at plus 650. That's the fun way to play this uh, long That's the shot hedge stuff. for the Celtics. So yeah. if you if you follow my Twitter and you saw me and I said wait for Milwaukee to win Game One and then bet Celtics money line to win the series at plus whatever, that's mm. the that's the way to play it. Get plus money on the Celtics to just win. And if Milwaukee wins, more than likely they probably do it in seven because I don't think the Celtics are that terrible to just get run out of here. And well, you, you may could, re- you may remember when Terrell did the exact same thing last round. So the hits the keep maps. on coming. Look out, big dogs. And you could also, you could also play Boston plus one and a half on the game price minus 150 and yep. Milwaukee to win in seven and cash both those. That's that maybe uh, get a little crazy. I don't, uh, yeah, minus 155 is a little wild. Yeah. yeah, I I don't I don't like taking that. Uh even though it, yeah, even though the plus one and a half is pretty tempting. Ryan, just yes. parlay it, parlay it with the Miami Heat and you'll be fine. You'll get uh, plus one. And a half. See, Terrell always has a solution. <laughs> I want I want to take my business to the financial advisory of uh Terrell Furman. Ryan, how are you feeling this morning? I know I'm feeling great. Got a uh, mm. nice uh, start to my day as always with my Athletic Greens, aka the AG1. You know, as an Eagles fan, I bleed green. I bleed athletic greens. That's right, because I am just jam packed full of this stuff. 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Again, you know, less than three dollars a day. Uh, very cheap. It helps. Uh, I've really noticed the difference with my stomach. Better sleep quality and recovery. They have over seven thousand five star reviews. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com/sgp. That's athleticgreens.com/sgp to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate. Daily nutritional insurance. Not only am I getting my body right, but let's get let's let's get our Wi-Fi right. Let's get our security right. AKA firing up the best VPN on the market. IP vanish, making your IP disappear. So hackers, ISPs, you don't want people getting involved in your browsing history. If you're moon off, you're looking up deep stats. You don't want the books knowing, hacking into your system, seeing what kind of uh, algorithms you're working on. You want it safe, secure, and IP vanish. They're offering an incredible 70% off their yearly plan and a 30 day money back guarantee. Essentially you get nine months free. All you gotta do is go to IPvanish.com slash S G P that's IPvanish.com slash S G P breaking news. Sean, if you hit that sound, IP vanish, changing their name to Evan Neal for the best protection out there. <laughs> Let's go. I'll be here all day, all week, all year. Oh Lord. Golden state, the warriors up one NFL uh, Ryan is here. Oh, NFL Ryan it never <laughs> left. Unlike you, I don't transform into these other sport creatures, Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, like I said, golden state up one Oh on Memphis, six thirty tip on Wednesday, May 3rd, minus two minus one thirty. Memphis plus one ten. Two twenty seven is the total. I mean, we were talking about this last round. Golden State has vibes of being your Western Conference champions. Uh, they stole game one. So same question we just asked ourselves. Are they gonna show up because they can put a real dent into the Memphis psyche or 
did the veteran team take care of business and steal the game on the road like they needed to, and and uh, maybe they cruise a little bit here. Moon off. What did we, what did we learn about this Memphis team in round one against the T Wolves? Because that series was all over the place. Yeah. Uh, I think I I forget where we were all on. I think I gave out uh, Memphis minus one and a half on the yeah. series at like minus one thirty. Somehow that cashed. That was a crazy series. But is this Memphis team good? Was was that Minnesota series a good wake up call? I know Terrell and I were vibing on uh, Grizzlies to win the West, which again still has a decent shot as anything right now. But I, I don't know. I can't get a good handle on this Memphis team. What's your take on them overall, Munaf? Doug, this team up and down, they have dogs. They're not going to give up no matter how much they're Dog. down. Like we saw that Dog. in in the first round against the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? They were down. 20 plus points twice. And I think in one game and they came back and won that game. So, you know, um, they have, they have blue collar guys and it's kind of right on Memphis brand. I mean, Grindhouse. guys like Brandon Clark, triple J Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, uh, John Rand, you know, found his way. I think he's going to have a great series against the golden state warriors. I think this is a better matchup for him um, in this series. Same thing with triple J Jaron Jackson jr. I think this is a better matchup for him. Uh, against the Golden State Warriors, um, you know I'm not going to be surprised if this series gets to seven games because we saw in Game One, it literally came down to the final seconds. If it wasn't for the John Morant miss, we'd be talking about Memphis being up 2-0, but Clay missed the two free throws as well. Um, I, I think they're more evenly matched than people think. I'm going to continue riding with the Warriors here. Uh, they've been good to me so far in the postseason. Um, didn't get the cover yesterday, but they did give me the money line win yesterday. Um, this is a spot for the Memphis Grizzlies, like in game two in round one, where they need to come out and they have to win this game because it's going to be very, very difficult for them to win four out of the five next games, especially when uh, golden state takes home court. And we know golden state in San Francisco in their new arena. It's, it's a very difficult place to win. It's a big home court advantage. So at least for game two, I'm going to go with Memphis here. Um, but as far as the series, I do like Golden State to come out and 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 or win this series and get to the Western Conference Finals. Tomcat in the YouTube chat saying uh, Golden State they drink a lot of AG one, but he's calling uh, he's calling the Memphis dogs a uh, little puppy dogs, saying they got a uh, they got not nothing to worry about. So you're on uh, for game one. You're or sorry game two game here. Two. You are on Memphis though, right? Yeah, game two for uh, I'll take Memphis. Um, I guess we'll get to the series in a second, but I, I do like the Warriors in the to win the series though. Yeah. Oh man, this is this is really tough because I do think. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna go Memphis a uh, plus two for game two because they they did show that they had kind of some confidence. They certainly weren't scared off of this Warriors team. I know Draymond uh, Draymond getting kicked out. I think that actually kind of rallied the Warriors uh, yeah. to a to a certain extent, and you know they closed it out. But really, that game could have gone either way. Memphis, unfortunate to kind of. They had a shot certainly to close that out there at the end. So I, I think they will be hungry for this one. And yeah. maybe Golden State takes their foot off the gas there a little bit. I do like I do think there's opportunities though for them to dominate um rebounding wise when Golden State goes small and isn't shooting lights out. So they really have to take advantage of that. Terrell, where are you at for uh, game two? So I was on Memphis the first game. I'm gonna be on Memphis the second game. I think Memphis is like Munaf said, there are a bunch of dogs, and I don't think that they're afraid of Golden State. Dog. They're truly not afraid of Golden State. And anytime Golden State went on a run, Memphis answered with a run. Whether it was a run for them to bring the game closer or whether it was a run for them to take the lead, Memphis answered every single time. And they didn't stop. John Morant was stepping outside, shooting threes. He shot a number of them and made a number of them. And Jaron Jackson Jr. said that I'm going to score on all levels of the basketball game. He's going to go out there and get it. If they can get any level of production from Dylan Brooks, because we know Desmond Bain, while he wasn't on last game, he can turn it on. If Dylan Brooks can add any level of production, this team is going to be incredibly tough to beat because there's too many options on the court. And when you add Brandon Clark and Melton coming off the bench, only issue is the offensive rebounding. That should have 100% been dominated by Memphis. Memphis should have hand, heads, shoulders, ups and down. Everything took that away from the Golden State Warriors and the Golden State Warriors were able to keep the number close with the offensive rebounding. And that's ultimately what kept them in the game. Yeah. They got to be able to dominate rebounding game too. Kramer. You, you're on Come the on. zigzag here. I would imagine you, you would, you would not um, go broke fading 
teams that come out and steal game one on the road in the second round of the NBA play. I mean, first round is a different story because you might have some pure talent mismatches. Second round, I got to imagine if we were to go back and do the data mining, we'd find that coming back with a strong zigzag play, especially money line, if we're just looking money line. So I would say, yeah, play the Grizzlies on the money line. Uh, as far as serious stuff, I, I think it's crazy to lay the one and a half for the Warriors minus two eighty. So I would probably just say let's go Warriors in six. Okay, yeah, Warriors in six is plus two eighty. The opened up as uh, Warriors minus two fifty five. That's since moved to minus five fifty. I think Memphis wins game two. Memphis wins game five. Hmm. What about you, Terrell? I know you're pro Memphis. Do you 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 getting down on them at, at plus four hundred for the series? Absolutely, absolutely. Because <laughs> right. so, so dude, it meant, I mean, just the way he answered that question, I'm on yeah, Memphis no. plus four hundred. Just because he's just like dead I'm not serious. Changing, absolutely, I'm not changing stream because they lost game one. Would yeah. I like to see them start one zero? Absolutely, oh, yeah. but they still have plenty of opportunity to win this next game, and I truly think that they can win games in. Uh, San Francisco. They've done it before in the play in last year. They've had that environment. They've been there, done this before. They can go win games in that arena. And so if they get a, a steal in this game three, game four, mm-hmm. well, then that opens all the door of opportunity for this easily to go seven. If this goes seven, I'm just take my chances. I'm just take my chances with Memphis. Maybe this is a changing of the guard. Here's a question for you. We we always like the conspiracy theory angle of the NBA, the idea that the NBA wants the best potential matchup for the NBA in the finals. And for for a long time, it's always been TV market driven. But the longer I sit in an office with Colby Dan and listen to him talk <laughs> about TV ratings, it makes me think that TV ratings are antiquated, and the NBA maybe doesn't care as much about that anymore. So I gotta ask. With the star power and the Twitter social buzz around John Morant, like, is it possible the NBA wants to stretch this guy out as long as possible? You know, so and and Terrell and I gave because typically that's not Memphis is not a market they want to see advancing in the NBA playoffs. I, I, but yeah, I co-signed his Memphis plus four hundred. But looking at this, I I think the way to play it is. <laughs> Memphis in six at plus fifteen hundred. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy or yeah. hell yeah! Hell Let's yeah! Go. As if Sean just pulled out some notes that were like, "All right, I can't. My thesis is complete." <laughs> Memphis in six or Memphis in seven at, at so Memphis in seven is plus seven hundred. Memphis yep. in uh, six is plus fifteen hundred. That's better than plus four hundred between those. <laughs> that is better than. Go, plus come on, it's just simple it math. Is. Man, you might as well take Grizzlies in five too. I read. Yeah, that's 30 to hey, one. All right. Our boy, Rudolph knows what's I, up. I'll tell you right now, if the Grizzlies were to win this in five, y'all would have to fire me. Y'all, <laughs> I just said something that got us all <laughs> hemmed up. Don't, oh. don't, don't tease me like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moon off a more rational take on this series. Uh, so you like, you like warriors. Um, maybe, maybe got down on it be- before, but if you're, if you're getting down now, what do you like as a way to play the Warriors? Are you taking minus one and a half, minus two eighty? Or are you taking like Warriors in five, six, or seven? What's the play? I think the best thing, I think we're on the or you know, betting on Memphis to win game two, right? And I think that you might be able to get better prices on the Warriors, obviously. So just Memphis hold off. does win game two to hold off. But you know, since we do give out picks and that's what we're here for. Exactly. Um, Warriors in six makes a lot of sense to me at plus two eighty. Yeah. Um, and then if you want to sprinkle, you know, total series to get to seven games as well, like I talked about, I wouldn't be surprised if this does get to seven games at plus three ten. I think there's some value on that as well. But um, regardless, if you like the Warriors or you don't, there's a lot of value on that Memphis four to one. So I wouldn't, you know, I, I'm not picking it as as an official pick here, but. After one game, especially with this Memphis team, there's a lot of value on that four to one. So if you want to, you know, really chop it up here, put a quarter unit on that four to one. But for any, you know, Warriors Brackers, seven games, um, and then plus two eighty for me in in uh, uh, Warriors in six. And so just doing some some math, if you like war the series to go seven plus three ten, 
you love uh, the war. The, plus you, three ten. You're better off splitting that bet up and saying yeah. Warriors in seven plus in seven. three six fifty. We've hacked the matrix. Sorry, what did I say in ten? Warriors in seven plus six fifty. Grizzlies in seven plus seven hundred. That will give you a, a higher guaranteed payout. I kind of agree with Moonoff in terms of the Warriors series price. I, I might look to to put some more down uh, after they lose this game. One thing you should note, Sean, by grabbing what Grizzlies in six at fifteen to one, you are you are going to lower your return in seven beneath the four to one threshold that you would have gotten if you just bet it blind. Like, but if you obviously if you get it in six, you're getting a, a juicy seven fifty. So, just wanted to make sure you're good on that. Wait, I think that went over his head. Sound when you need it. <laughs> so, so, so because you're playing two of the Memphis futures, yes, you're adjusting in seven. It would be plus three fifty. In six, it's plus seven fifty because you're you're halving your winnings. Yeah. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So by taking that extra game six at fifteen to one, you're actually hurt. you're you might be better off just taking Grizzlies in seven. Is what my point mm. is. Because then you're 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 maximizing that. Well, what seven if, to one. if they win in six? Then I'll be super. Pissed. I think it's that's true. You're right. Okay, logic no, is sound. I like the, it's your I, thesis, not mine. No, <laughs> no, I get it. I know. I in my head, I quickly looked at fifteen hundred and seven hundred and assumed it would be better than the plus four hundred. But you're right, and the plus four hundred obviously gets it's, you coverage on when they win in five games. Let's go. It, you maybe you want to approach this like a win place bet where maybe you're you're. Overloading uh, the, yeah, the so seven a little bit more than the six. Yeah, seven would be eighty percent of my <laughs> unit, and uh, Grizzlies in six is only going to get twenty percent of my unit. Ryan, thus creating oh, the no. necessary EV. Only the only the tip on on yes. Grizzlies in six. Okay, <laughs> got it. I love it. Where's Madden when you need him? I'm gonna get down on that. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. Twenty percent. Penetration. All right, <laughs> I gotta close it out. Lock dog and a series play. Our favorite series play. We gave out a bunch of them. My lock. Uh, Wait, did you go first last time? I don't know. Ryan, you kind of feel you, like you I went first, first last yeah, time, first. and we we've I feel like been pretty good as NBA's a show. Uh, even uh, with the annoying NBA Sean here for for oh, an extra NBA round. All right, Heat minus eight. Memphis, <laughs> Memphis uh, wins this wins game two outright for my dog. Okay, and f- which series price did I like the most? Mm. I think it's Miami minus one and a half, minus one forty. Okay, nice minus one forty series price. Moon off. What do you got? Oh, you don't like that. Uh, all right, know, it's I, against the Sixers. I think I did this last time and it worked out well where I took halves. Um, nice. Boston first half minus three and a half in game two tomorrow. Sharp. Uh, I think they're going to have to come out. They'll, they'll play well. They'll knock down their shots early. Um, so I like that Boston first half minus three and a half um, for my dog. Uh, it's got to be Memphis tomorrow. Um, if you're able to find an alt line mm. on Memphis, uh, let me see if I can find one here. I'll look it up while you're talking. Okay. And then for my serious price, uh, I think Phoenix minus one and a half minus 135, I think was the number that we had discussed. Um against Dallas. I think I like that. I think that I find a hard time seeing Dallas winning three games against this Phoenix squad. I think Phoenix gets it done in either five or six games. So uh serious spread Suns minus one and a half minus one thirty five. Uh, so they kind of mess with the alts, the alt numbers when the money when it's a short spread like this. So flipping around to the other side doesn't give you a ton of juice compared to the money line. But if you wanted to go Memphis minus six, you uh, get plus two ten. Ooh, cool. Yeah, lock it in. Oh man, I like that. And minus two ten. Shout out to our buddies over at WinBet. All right, Terrell, close it down. What do you got? Lock dog and a favorite series bet. All right, for my lock, let's go ahead. Miami minus eight. Just put it in there. Game one, they get it done. Touching. For my dog, let's go. Ooh, I'm going a little contrarian here. I like the Bucks, but I get a lot of value on on Dallas. But I gave no. Dallas out on the NBA pod. Yeah, I'll That's get Bucks right. out here. I get I get Bucks out here. It's fine. So many I'll wins. cash out. I'll cash everything and then be look like Superman. So Milwaukee give me Bucks money, money line. line. Give Plus me Bucks one. money line. Two zero. The Celtics fold whenever everybody thinks they're gonna win. They fold. I like so, that yeah. logic. 
And then for my series price, I have to do it. I, I have to commit to it. I can't not commit to it because if I don't commit to it, then it's going to happen. And when it happens, Moon Off is going to give me shit because I didn't commit to it. So <laughs> Memphis Grizzlies, we're not going to get cute. We're not going to do anything. Memphis Grizzlies to win the series plus 400. This is this is it. John Morant is here. This Grizzlies team is here. I don't know how they're going to get it done, but they're going to get it done. Like it. Ryan. Unlike, unlike the sleeper game, there is no restriction. You can play the Sixers for all three, the lock, the dog, and the series Ooh, price. Do I want to <laughs> we will not restrict you. <laughs> all right. Give me Memphis plus two for oh. my lock. Oh, I see. Get him off the scent. For my <laughs> dog. Give me the Sixers <laughs> plus 270. They're going to get it done. And for my series price, as much as I do believe in the Sixers to come back, I want to give people out some uh, value, some mega dogs. Give me the Bucks in seven at plus six fifty. That is too juicy of a dog to resist. If you Let's go. And if you didn't catch that, Sean saying negative EV move to bet on the Sixers. No, that was not <laughs> that was not what I said at all, Ryan. Plus EV. You know it's a plus EV because it's a goddamn winner. All right. Uh, thank you, Terrell. Thank you, Moon Off. Check them out. Giving out a ton of winners over on the NBA Gamble and Podcast. You can follow Terrell on Twitter at Really Rel. Uh, double uh, underscore after that. Really R E L L. Double underscore. And Moon Off on Twitter at Sports Nerd eight two four. Follow us on Twitter at Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Second the Money Green. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And he is Ryan. Sean, apparently Pete Davidson got a tattoo of some children. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>